upon the mountain, mountain by one's boat, out of his mouth came fire and smoke, and all around all me, around me so, far, so far, I asked my Lord if all was Jesus, 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your, and with your spirit. spirit. Thanks for praying with us today. We're here at the Church of St. Paul the Apostle in the city of New York, and I welcome friends and uh, parishioners from the neighborhood, family, and friends of the Paulists from around the country. We pray in union with the whole church on Pentecost, a great feast day. Fifty days ago, on Easter, we let forth alleluias, and we've had 50 days to reflect on that because the joy of the Lord is with us even in difficult times. Today, on Pentecost, we open our hearts again to the wind and fire of the Holy Spirit. But first, let us refer back to that great feast of Easter when we refer to the waters of the Red Sea that split in two so that the people could come to freedom. We remember the waters of creation. We remember the water along with blood that flowed from the side of Christ as he hung upon the cross. We remember Christ's own baptism in the Jordan. And we pray for the grace to remember and live our baptism. We join now in the angels' song of praise.
us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and every nation, pour out the gifts of your Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, They were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd But they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them? in his native language. We are Parthians, Medes and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as Travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The Word of the Lord. Send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O oh Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Veni Sante Spiritus, et et mite celitus, lucis tu eradium. Veni Pater Pauperum, veni Dator Munerum, Veni lumen cordium, consolator optime, dulcis hospes anime, dulce refrigerium. In labore requies, in estu temperies, Infletus olatium. Alux beatissima, Reple cordes intima, Tuorum fidelium. Sine tuo numine, Nihil est in homine, Nihil est in oxium. Lava quodes ordidum, Riga quodes aridum, Sana quodes acium, Flecte quodes rigidum, Fove quodes frigidum, Rege quodes devium, Naruis fidelibus, Inter confidentibus, Sacrum septenarium. Da virtutis meritum, Da salutis exitum, Da perene gaudium. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Fill the hearts of your faithful ones and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia! 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, 
and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to them and make our dwelling with them. Those who do not love me do not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Kindle in us the fire of your love. Do you remember the first time you fell in love? Coming alive in a way you never knew before. Do you remember the first time you looked into his or her eyes and the whole world seemed to stop, if just for a few seconds. This experience is an experience of mystery, a glimpse into eternity. The intensity of the feeling doesn't last, but we remember. A song, an aroma, a special place, will surprise us with the memory. And these memories give us a reason to do the hard work of growing in love. Do you remember the first time you had a sense of the presence and love of God? A moment when you felt so connected to the universe and our Creator. Perhaps this happened at the end of a retreat, or perhaps it was one night out in the country when you looked up at the sky and saw all the stars like you've never seen them before. Just as with experience of human love, the intense feeling of falling in love with God doesn't last not in the feelings, but we remember the experience, the promise. These memories are essential because they empower us to walk in faith during times of darkness. We know that the cares of the world often overtake us and can end up taking the place of that number one person in our life. And we know that these things can push aside God from the central place in our lives and hearts. That's where the Holy Spirit plays a central role, because we need to be reminded. And as we hear in Jesus' last discourse, we have promise to send the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, the Spirit will remind you of all that I have told you. When we are in touch with the Spirit of God in our lives, the Spirit will trouble us if we're losing sight of what is most important. And the Spirit will comfort and guide us. The Spirit will stir us up to seek God helping us persevere in commitments we make because of love. The Holy Spirit will put us in touch with the deepest and best desires of the heart. We believe that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of love, the expression of the love between the Father and the Son. Every year, 
in the nine days leading up to Pentecost. The whole church prays for a new outpouring of the Spirit with gifts of wisdom, understanding, a deeper faith, and much more. As we pray for spiritual gifts, we ask that the Holy Spirit use these gifts in a way that reminds us of a first love, of a first intense awareness of God. The Holy Spirit helps us to live in love. Where are you with us today? Maybe grateful, grateful for the memories of falling in love with someone so special. The memories of falling in love with God. I hope so. But maybe you're in a different place, perhaps yearning for a first love, perhaps feeling clueless about how to open your heart to human love and God's love. God wants to give each of us the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God wants to give each of us gifts of love. And Pentecost is a time when we can pray for God's gifts and graces. It's a special time of grace. We can pray for new hope beyond our sorrows. We can pray for a faith that is deeper and surer than our doubts. We can pray for a love that shatters our despair and fills us with meaning and direction in life. These past few days have been dark and troubling for our country. The killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis has once again exposed the prejudice, inequality, injustice that poison our country. News reports have told us that black and Hispanic Americans are suffering from the coronavirus and the collapse of the economy more so than most Americans. The news tells us that we are in the same storm, but not really in the same boat We need to do the same things that we do when we can't feel, when we can't see God in our lives, or when we're tempted to give up on someone we love. Remember who you are. Remember who we are as a people, as a country. Remember the promise of America our best ideals, our vision of liberty and justice for all. Pentecost. Remember those gifts of the Holy Spirit that we had to memorize um, before confirmation. I did anyway in sixth grade. The gifts, wisdom, understanding, knowledge, counsel, strength, piety, fear of the Lord. These are gifts we need in our own life. These are gifts we need for the life of our church. These are gifts we need for the common good, to build up the common good in our country and our world. As we open our lives to these gifts and respond to the grace, putting the gifts into action, we will experience what St. Paul calls the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, goodness. I got this idea that falling in love opens us up to the presence and action of 
the Holy Spirit, and other ways. The grace flows in both directions. I got this from a prayer, so I'd like to read it to you. It's called, Fall in Love, Stay in Love. Nothing is more practical in finding God than falling in love in a quite absolute, final way. What you are in love with, what seizes your imagination, will affect everything. It will decide what will get you out of bed in the morning, what you do with your evenings, how you spend your weekends, what you read, who you know, what breaks your heart, and what amazes you with joy and gratitude. Fall in love, stay in love, and it will decide everything. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, kindle in us the fire of your love. Please join in our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son as adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Joined to Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit, we entrust to the Father all our intentions and the hopes and needs of the whole church and the world. That each of us and our whole church be open to the gifts and challenges of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our bishops and local pastors, as we find the right way to open our churches and worship together safely and joyfully, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For our high school and college graduates, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the peaceful rest of William Fendmore, Joseph Angel Muniz, Milton Misner, and Father Rich Colgan, and for all who have died during this time of the coronavirus, and for all the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For setting right the injustices laid bare by the killing of George Floyd, for a renewed wave of action for justice, for there can be no true peace without justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who work in hospitals, 
pharmacies and supermarkets and delivery services, serving with courage so that we might have food, medicine, and medical care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are anxious, worried, hungry, hopeless as they suffer for lack of work, lack of money, for the basic necessities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pause. As we unite our prayers with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Paul the Apostle, and servant of God Isaac Hecker, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we are conscious of our great need of your mercy. As we lift up all our intentions to you with confidence, we rely on the Holy Spirit to guide our prayers and pour out the grace to respond to your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For bringing your paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on all you make your adopted children, uniting us to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and, and earth are full of your, of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. All you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a perfect offering may be made. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we bring to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving thanks said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave it to his disciples. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set, set us free. free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous erect, uh, resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving a holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, on the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who were nourished by the body and blood of your Son, may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May the sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and love your pilgrim church here on earth. With Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy, all who serve in your name, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. We pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, lead us not, not into, into temptation, temptation but, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all distress as we await in joyful hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, For the, kingdom the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit, we share a sign of Christ's peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world, world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, God you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Grant, Grant us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am, I am not, not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say, say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord God, you bestow heavenly gifts on your church. Safeguard the grace you pour out upon your people, that the gifts of the Holy Spirit poured out upon us may retain all their force, and that this spiritual food, the Eucharist, may gain us abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Don't go away quite yet. We have an announcement from the pastor about the process of reopening the church and a special Pentecost blessing. Thank you, Father Paul. Uh, so hi, everybody. Yes, indeed. Uh, the opening of the church, we are entering into phase one of the Archdiocesan plan to open up the church and that means we'll be opening up our doors for a limited time 
for a private meditation prayer here in the church uh, starting on Wednesday, this Wednesday, June, I believe that's the second or third, the third, June the third. And that will be from nine o'clock in the morning to 1130. So we hope to be doing this weekdays, Monday through Friday, for the few, next few weeks to have you come on in if you wish to pray. We'll also have candles if you wish to light a candle. It's a great way to have your prayer continue uh, after you leave this beautiful building. So we'll have everything set up for you that way. Uh, we'll have all kinds of regulations for you for now just to know, bring a mask, wear a mask. That is one of the requirements, okay? Thank you for that. And uh, pay attention to the website because we might have some ongoing updating uh, to share with you. Uh, secondly, I want to share with you also that our pledge drive for Faith Direct is continuing. We had a, a donor uh, for the month of May who would match whatever new uh, persons gave for that one time, either the <laughs> weekly offering or the monthly that they will continue to give. Um, he's matching that for us. And so I'm uh, very happy to say to you, we have this weekend left uh, for this. And we've reached 67 new persons subscribing to Faith Direct. So why I love Faith Direct is that it allows you to continue to be your steward to own this building whether you're here or not. So if you go on vacation, you're still giving. If the weather's bad and you can't come to church for some reason, you're still giving to keep this beautiful building here, to keep uh, Paul and I and Father Matt uh, sustained <laughs> to keep us going. So we thank you uh, for, on behalf of um, all of us here that work here at the St. Paul the Apostle Church. Thank you very much. Let us pray. And to these prayers, you can uh, answer with a serious and joyful amen. May God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of that same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith. And by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Come, Holy Ghost.